live in. Lord, thank you for your hand being upon this state and upon this nation, upon this community. Guide and direct these who would come to give voice to all of those who are living in this community. And so I ask that you give them wisdom and direction and just bring peace into this meeting and that it will go all according to order and according to your word. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Councilman, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Absolutely. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councilman McIntosh. Here. Councilwoman Martin. Here. Councilman Slack. Here. Mayor Nelson. Here. Councilman Simmons. Here. Councilwoman Simons. Here. Councilman Longhart. Here. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. All righty, good. Uh, we're going to have now co public comment on agenda items only. Anyone wishing to speak on an agenda item, please come forward. Oh, Peter. Good evening, everyone. My name is Maribel Sleba. I'm the director of Benita Springs Assistance Office, and I'm here to give a little perspective from the social services point of view of the resolution considering um, to support the statewide uniform plastic bag policy. I want to give you a little bit of our experience in that regards. The Benita Assistance Office, as you know, has the largest in the most complete pantry in South Lee County. We have a choice pantry where our clients are able to come and pick and choose the food that they need and they obviously like to have. Among those items, we have the canned goods, we have produce, dairy products, and we have frozen meat. So for us, having plastic bags are necessary. Many of our clients come on a bicycle, so giving them boxes or paper bags are not feasible for them and not practical. Besides, our volunteers and our neighbors know the work that we do and they bring the plastic bags to us. So I want you to have that little perspective on how we recycle those bags and they are given to good use for our community. So just to give a little perspective of this uh, wise use of plastic bags. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good evening. My name is Patrick Vanass. I'm the chairman of the uh, Chamber's Government Advisory Committee. I'm also the local representative for the Florida Redevelopment Association, which is the membership organization for all CRAs in Florida. And I'm here on behalf of those groups to talk to item uh, 11A and um, to let you know that we fully encourage uh, City Council to hold a workshop on the redevelopment of Old 41. We think the timing is right to re-examine that issue. We think that redevelopment of Old 41 uh, represents a great opportunity for the city. It can provide economic benefits but also uh, community uh, benefits. Um, we um, would encourage you to open up the discussion to the local communities and also the business community. And that being said, I think we can have uh, some strong partnerships uh, with the private and public sector moving forward on the redevelopment. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Good evening, council members. Uh, I would like to speak for a moment on agenda uh, item 8B. My name is Doug Pratt. I am a homeowner in Spanish Wells and the senior pastor of First Presbyterian Church both of them located approximately a half a mile west of the current dog track. <coughs> I know that your job is partly, as council members, to care for the city's finances. And it's a hard job, and I don't envy you at all. But part of your job is also to care about the whole life of our community. And we need to think about the full implications of what is before you in terms of social costs and its impact. Free lunches are very appealing, but sometimes they're not free. The business and social negative consequences are both significant, I believe. The only impact I can imagine on our local businesses from the arrival of uh, uh, um, an increased amount of casino gambling via slot machines will be to raise the labor costs for the existing businesses. They will not profit. The casino company will want to keep all of its business within its walls. Even more significantly, though harder to quantify, are the social costs. These are very real and long-term and damaging. 
Do we really want to become Atlantic City South or something like it? I encourage you, if you don't remember the story from Greek mythology of Pandora's box, to look it up on the internet. It's a story, oh so human, about how human beings can be tempted by something that seems so good, but unintended consequences can come. And that can certainly be the case with a legislation like this that will set our city on a very different course for a long time to come. And do we really want to let the public decide via a ballot across Lee County? I don't know that people in Lehigh Acres and Cape Coral and Fort Myers, nothing wrong with those folks, but why would they care about the quality of life in our city? That's our decision to make and should not be passed off to someone else. And I want to say that about a dozen years ago, before I moved to this wonderful place that is now my home and will be for the rest of my career, I lived in a city in the north that went through the decision process and decided to open up some expanded casino gambling. There were lots of promises about wonderful windfalls that would come. And after it was all approved and the casino was up and running, we learned sadly that some of our government leaders were making promises and even taking money for their campaign funds from well-heeled gambling companies. I'm confident that none of you have fallen into that trap. But I do want to tell you that other cities have been down this road and it has not been the panacea and the wonderful economic boon that has been promised. And we need to be careful and we need to be cautious because in that case, most of the money left town into the coffers of a distant gambling company. As a pastor and a counselor for almost 35 years, I've many times heard the story of people who were so tempted by something that looks so good. But I have to say there are times when the best response to temptation is to say no. And I believe that may be the best for our beloved city. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Rick Steinmeier. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, I guess it's said that money, the love of money is the, root, the uh, root of all evil. Well, I guess the dog tracks the uh, incubator or the, the farm for uh, the love of money. So you don't go there for anything except money and love of it. The referendum is countywide. If, this, uh, if the referendum goes down, this agreement is null and void completely. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I'm Roger Brunswick. I'm a 20-year resident of the city of Benita Springs. Proud to be a property owner in the city. And I want to speak uh, with regards to item B of uh, agenda, uh, number eight, number eight B, the, uh, the uh, slots referendum. Mm -hmm. uh, I see... Uh, opportunity here for the city of Bonita Springs, the people of Lee County, as well as the people of Bonita Springs, uh, increase of jobs, increase of construction jobs. Uh, we are looking at a family that has owned a business within Bonita Springs, arguably perhaps maybe one of the oldest running businesses in the city of Bonita Springs since the early or since the late 60s. The Havanick family has uh, run the, uh, the <coughs> Naples Fort Myers dog track. Uh, there has been little, if any, uh, problems or issues with gambling, paramutual gambling. Uh, we have more issues today with people, uh, probably with lottery and more issues with these. Uh, uh, convenience store ca casinos that we have in the city. So I'm in favor of it. Uh, I believe it will help the city grow. It's a beautiful piece of property. It's the gateway to our lovely community. And uh, I ask for the, would ask the city council to uh, accept uh, the uh, agenda item. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. William Lewis, Bonita Springs. First off, I'd like to say that I am against this slot agreement in its present form for the following reasons. 
As we know, the county has accepted the one and a half percent. And why shouldn't they? They don't have a bargaining chip. We do. We have the bargaining chip here. It's been said, we're, okay, we, we'll give you one and a half percent of the gross. Okay, where is the negotiation here? Has there been real negotiation on this? I don't think so. Mr. Schwinn has said, I will negotiate, perhaps bring the 250 limit down to 200. That's minor, really. We should be starting on a negotiation here of 5%. Oh, terrible, right? What can they say? No, okay, where is the agreement between the two? No one has done this. This is one shot, gentlemen. And then to cover what was not done, we bring up, oh, 900 jobs for construction. Oh, look at the tax rateables that we will get on this. Oh, um, impact fees. Well, if we said to the track people, look, we don't want any one and a half percent, all of these little goodies would come to us regardless. So that's, that's coming whether we say no, what, or what. It's coming in. But it's the one and a half percent. Please think about it, and I strongly suggest, oh, and I attended a meeting months ago at the track, and Izzy was there who presented the facts if this referendum was approved. And he said 500 jobs would come into Bonita, period. Now I understand it's 40% of the 500, which is 200 jobs. Who put in that 40% and why? And another thing, can you tell me if those 200 jobs are just part-time? How many full-time jobs are there? You know, I suggest we postpone a vote until we get all these facts in and then decide and at least start some sort of a negotiation here. I mean, you just don't roll over when we hold the, the card game, we hold the hand. They hold a pair of deuces and they're bluffing us. Think about it. One and a half percent? It's not kosher. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak this time? Please come forward. Good evening, everyone. For the record, Kathy McGrath, property owner over 40 years, permanent resident 30 years, and I have comments on two things. The first thing is under the proclamations, uh, I'm so pleased to see this certificate of recognition to Shaw Development. It just goes to show you that all the hard work that the uh, Chamber of Commerce has done is proving Here's the fruits of their labor. We're going to get more and more development here, and I want to thank them for that. And the other comment I have is on this slot machine issue. I am absolutely in favor of it. Izzy and his family have been good neighbors and good friends for as long as I've been coming to Bonita Springs and even before that. And they have not had any problems at their other facilities. This is a no-brainer, as I've said to many of you in private. You cannot legislate morality. People want to gamble. They're going to find some place to gamble. So all this is is approving a referendum where those of us in Benita can vote on the slots. And I think you should give them that opportunity. And I ask you please to approve this because I think it would benefit it. As far as numbers of jobs and construction, I'm not going to start spouting out figures because I'm not familiar with them. But I would not like to see Bonita Springs compared to Atlantic City. I was born 18 miles from Atlantic City, and I know Atlantic City, and there's absolutely no comparison. If you don't want to gamble, don't go there. We have a wonderful policing unit that can handle if there are any problems there, and I don't think there will be. So I ask you to please approve this and give the residents of Bonita Springs the opportunity. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Would anyone else this time like to come forward? Come right forward. I'm Margaret Good evening, gentlemen, ladies. Hey. I am a resident here 12 years. Can you stand up to the microphone? Yes, sir. <laughs> you, can pull that, you can pull that born, microphone forward if you want my to. My dad then. was born in uh, the um, Depression era, a factory worker. I'm six of eight children. So I understand tough times. We didn't know we were poor. We had a good life. And that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for in Bonita Springs, a good life. <laughs> and I have to tell you, I was employed for six and a half years at Publix, here and then over there. And I made them my sole provider. I bought specifically through them. I didn't get around. I worked. I was a housewife. I'm a property owner. And uh, when I fell on my tailbone and got disabled and began looking for the cheapest things and going all over shopping with my coupons, I met a lot of people. And I was so disappointed because the people in, in uh, uh, Publix were, just had an atmosphere of really good folks. And I didn't really do much, I'm a housewife. But, I have to tell you that I am against all gambling. I wish we would back out because the decisions we make today do not just affect you, ladies and gentlemen. They affect the next generation. And we can be very unique. As a matter of fact, I have been studying for years organic cooking. And I have been given big ideas, and then I fell on my tailbone and have little money. <laughs> and I'm on a limited income now, but I, it's not over yet. Nevertheless, what I'm trying to say is, like last year, I was uh, picking up uh, lunch for my husband and I at Subway next to John Malo's uh, sports bar grill, and I came out of the uh, parking lot and here was a rental convertible with three people, a gentleman, a lady in the middle, and another uh, gentleman. And they weren't having very nice words. And I passed because they were just sitting at the stop sign. And I asked, can I help you? And the guy who was driving looked cross-eyed at me. And he says, my battery is dead. I said, do you have help? He said, yes. And I just moseyed on. No, we don't need to have different elements in here. I envision our town as the place to go to get well, not to get inebriated. I get a lot of joy in making other people happy. I don't need artificial stimulants to know what joy is. And this is my point, that we can take over our town and make it the best it can be. We can have a difference and uh, be happier for it. We do not have to bow to people who uh, actually uh, are quite unhappy that they have to force themselves to think they're getting happy. We don't have to do that. We can turn around and uh, actually, I used to uh, travel to um, Colorado for uh, vacations and I stayed on a dude ranch there and the College teachers used to take care of the dude ranch all summer long. Teachers taking care of the dude ranch, they'd take the kids up in the mountains and they would uh, take care of the kids. We can convert our dog track into a professional international uh, dirt bike track. We can uh, convert the dog track into a place where um, uh, it's a, a family amusement park, and adults can come and have a safe place to put their children. And we have the Shangri-La opening up, and it's a very healthy place to be here, and we'd like to keep it that way, please. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Anyone else at this time, please come forward. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Sharkey, Hickory Boulevard, Benita Springs, 26-year resident. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, echo a lot of people's thoughts with the pro end of the uh, 
slot machines and gambling issues at uh, the dog track. Um, they've been here a long time, and they've proven to be uh, loyal to this city in good times and bad. Uh, gambling, as you all know, is a percentage business, and that operates on a very little percentage. Slow times in this city over the past few years, uh, going back a few, those folks stuck in with us uh, when they could have bailed, and they stayed. Also, they have a remarkable record of retention of employees. There was a chef there that worked in their facility on the East Coast and this West Coast. His name was Jesse. I don't recall the gentleman's last name. Unfortunately, he passed. New York City retired police officer, the first security guard there. His name was Norbert. He was there for 24 years. He's passed us. He was an older gentleman at the time, too, so they have no uh, uh, issues with age employment either. They, in, uh, they employ uh, different people uh, of all age groups. Uh, again, the employee retention rate there, everybody seems to be very happy, and the outfit themselves, the Havanek family, um, I don't know the two young gentlemen that are here today, but I do know, uh, I think, one of their brothers, they attended Amanda, my daughter Amanda's law school over at Miami University. I did meet the mother at a few functions over there. They're big, loyal supporters of the University of Miami and their football program. And they do have the devotion um, with the city, and uh, they do a lot of good things for us. Uh, what I think it will create, it will create a lot of stimulus in the city, economic developments. I think, we're career, uh, I think we're all concerned about that uh, over the course of the last six months. Uh, jobs, taxis, limousines, hotels, restaurants, bars, uh, entertainment. I think it does a, a very good uh, shot in the arm for us. It's going to create a lot of jobs, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, this council will pass it. And on top of uh, a few comments that were made, uh, that 1.5%, that's a gift, I think. No one's telling them to do that. Uh, the only thing they, they have to do, if mandated, is through the state. They have to make a donation through the state. No one's telling them they don't have to donate anything to Benita if they want. They came up and we generously donated a point and a half of the percentage, and I think that's a, that's a, that's a pro, that's a big pro position. So uh, that's about all i got to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else this time? Please come forward on any agenda item. Good evening, Christine Ross from Benita Springs Area Chamber of Commerce. I just wanted to make two comments, uh, one on item 8B. First of all, I um, appreciate the agreement that's been negotiated. Um, I love the fact that 40% of the jobs, if the slots referendum passes, would be reserved for Benita residents. I think that's awesome. I think that uh, the Havanek family has run a really an awesome business. They have a beautiful, large piece of property that could be the showcase and the gateway to this city. So my encouragement to you tonight is not to just think about slots, but to think about a multi-purpose entertainment venue that could become a place for concerts, for entertainment, whatever it is that they decide to create there. They have some very interesting ideas. Um, and I think that it's not fair for anyone to try to legislate away their right to develop that property. Um, so we're very much, the Economic Development Council is officially going to put out a paper supporting the slots referendum, so we would encourage you to support it as well. Um, the second item I wanted to discuss is the plastic bag issue. If, in fact, this body decides they would like to um, talk about some kind of a program with the plastic bags, please take a step back, create a little working committee, let's bring in the likes of Publix and Target so that we can from a business perspective, be business friendly and get their ideas on how this could be managed. Don't just decide to jump on board with another community because maybe you think it sounds right. Let's try to take a pro-business attitude here and get some more input before you make any moves there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else this time, please come forward. Uh, yes, Alex Grant, uh, former member of local planning agency, four years, and for, former city councilman here for four years. Uh, I'm taking a bit of a different approach on the 8A, 8B uh, uh, amendment. Uh, what I'm concerned, again, as I mentioned before, is the cost of additional law enforcement 
in the neighboring area. We are not talking about the people that are here presently, but this type of a gambling operation uh, sometimes attracts a, shall I say, less than desirable group of people. <coughs> I am sure that the people at the dog track will keep that element under control on their premises. The problem is in the neighborhood area around the dog track. I think that we are greatly underestimating the cost of necessary additional law enforcement that we will be needing when this operation is in full gear. In my opinion, the amount of money that you're getting from the dog track will have to be used for l additional law enforcement with the sheriff's office. So that is my thing. The cost of the law enforcement is the big unknown here. And if we have to double the cost of the sheriff's deputies, then that one and a half percent is going to go to the Lee County Sheriff's Office. Uh, also, I do not know how many of you have read the very well thought out letter to the editor of the October issue of the Spotlight entitled Myth of Victimless Vice by Dr. Doug Pratt, pastor of the First Presbyterian Church. What concerns me is the huge temptation of this added gambling enterprise in a down economic area having an effect of selling this city's soul for 30 pieces of silver. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else at this time, please come forward on any agenda item. How you doing, Ron Pure? Bonita Springs, TAG, formerly of, I'm only kidding. Uh, big issue, uh, eight, uh, what is it, eight B, uh, the, uh, the uh, slot machine enterprise coming to town. Uh, have met with uh, a lot of people over the past two weeks, including some of your very own here at City Hall. And uh, I'd like to have answers, and I hope I can stick around for the thing to appear, but I hope you'll address things like, how on earth did Lee County get a piece of this action? What was said? What, was, uh, what transpired between this city, the mayor, or any council person, and their commission or staff to lead them to believe that they had this entitlement? Now, what I've read in the paper so far, most recently, is that the uh, state legislature is going to convene uh, probably sometime soon and decide what they want to do with slots statewide. Uh, unless I misunderstood something, there's only hardcore paperwork associated with the um, East Coast uh, uh, situations, the private ones, not the tribal ones. I think the tribal ones may cover the whole state. So uh, I think that was a coup and a half. It also tells me that the Havnick family was, were prepared to offer 3% from the get-go to open the door at 041 and Benita Beach Road on their 100-acre piece of property that they've had for many years, and uh, I'm told that they've managed it very well over that, uh, that time. However, uh, my take and others that have been involved in um, high, medium, and low-level negotiations over the years uh, say if they were willing to go to three, and they did, walking in your door. Here, they said, we'll give you a point and a half. I got to believe that they might be able to go to five or six percent. Some have said, get real. I think this is very real. These are hard dollars. The organization and their slots alone, you all know that now, 
the uh, most recent gross there annually was $1,200,000,000. That's not all doable to uh, those that have uh, part of that pie, the state, for example. But uh, the portion that is is still considerable money. And it's something that you folks should really give some serious consideration to picking up as much as you can. Because every dollar that we get from that enterprise is an offset to what you will have to do downstream with respect to uh, passing your annual budgets and taxing the folks who own property here as well and live here. Some will take the note or have the attitude that they, it's something that you have to grin and bear. I'm not opposed and as are many others, we're not opposed to uh, slots in the city. However, it's only a piece of a part of their action. Uh, the critical mass is enormous. They get uh, that piece uh, in place, uh, and I hope it's more sizable than it is now, for the city. They have all those other enterprises that that thing is going to draw on. And that is an awful lot of people that'll be uh, coming to Benita to do business in the future. We want them, but we also want a bigger piece of the pie. We don't want you to give away credits and development uh, reimbursements and so on. That should be a no-no. It's, it's, I believe, perhaps discriminatory to others that will build in our city in the future. Enough for now. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Anyone else at this time? Please come forward. I was going to say, Steve, you can't you can't go up there and talk. <laughs> Anyone else like speak? Nope. Okay, uh, we'll put it into the public comment for this, at this time. Uh, now we're at proclamations and presentations. And uh, would uh, Carlos Lozano and Juan Romero please come forward? Carlos, Juan. Everybody else. I'm gonna bring their families. Bring the family. Bring the families. Bring the kids. Oh, yeah, and if you have an entourage, go ahead. And the yeah. entourage. Yeah. Go ahead, come on, come on. Your bodyguards? <laughs> How you done? That's Hi. You have the security you, right here. It says security. Awesome. Yeah, he has security. Right come, on. <laughs> come on, young ladies. You're an honor roll student. Hello, what's your name? Maria Elena Marianas. I'm just doing this to embarrass you. Um, what's your name? Anna. That's very good. Valentina. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Valentina. Valentina, and your name? Alexandra. <coughs> I, and do you do you know him? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to check, be sure. <laughs> anyway, know that. Uh, proclamation. And it's our pleasure to, to present this at this time. Whereas the story of the Hispanics in America is the story of America itself. The Hispanic community's values, love of family and uh, a deep and rich abiding faith and a strong work ethic are America's values. And whereas Hispanics bring together the rich traditions of the communities with centuries old roots in America and the energy and drive of recent immigrants. And whereas Hispanics have played a vital role in the moments and movement that have shaped our country and whereas they have enriched our culture, brought creativity and innovation to everything from sports to the sciences and from arts to our economy, and whereas Hispanics have served with honor and distinction in every conflict since the Revolutionary War, and they have made invaluable contributions through their service to our country, and whereas Hispanics continue to enrich our nation's character and shape our common future, they strengthen America's promise and affirm the narrative of American unity and progress. Now, therefore, I, Ben L. Nelson, uh, Jr., Mayor of the City of Benita Springs, on behalf of the City Council, do hereby proclaim September 15, 2012, <coughs> to October 15, 2012 as Hispanic Heritage Month and call upon all citizens of Benita Springs to observe this month with appropriate ceremonies, activities, and programs. And on behalf of this community, thank you very much. And I'd like to go ahead and present this to one of you. Everybody, please give them a hand. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, you see you're on TV right there. Everybody can see you in town. Uh-oh. Not good. 
There we go. Yeah. The mayor takes it away. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you That's so much. That's awesome. My pleasure. Yes. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello there, how are you? What's your name? Thank you. Nice to see you. So now you can see your politician right there. Well, that was really cute. Good job. Okay, and at this time, uh, Kevin, would you, Kevin uh, Hawksworth, would you please come forward, Rashad Development. And Christine, could you please join us from, Christine from the EDC, could you please, Benita Springs Economic Development Council. Yeah, right. How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, we had the pleasure of uh, being up at the uh, uh, Horizon Council's in Industry Appreciation uh, luncheon up there, and I got to tell you, it was a pleasure to sit at the table with them because, I mean, you get all the attention when you're with the superstar, the whole thing up there. <laughs> they are really something that this community should be really proud of, and you've done a great job up there. We're so proud to have you in this community, and so that's what this Certificate of Appreciation is about. It's about your contributions to our community, your faith in our community by building an actual factory. It's, I mean, mm -hmm. what you have going on there, Kevin, and what you've done is exactly what our dream is for this community. I, I, I don't, I'm just flabbergasted when I go by there. Thank you so much for what you do. And on uh, behalf of the City Council, this is Certificate of Recognition awarded to Kevin J. Hawksworth from Shaw Development in recognition of your contributions to this community and leadership in manufacturing technology. This should be 10 times that long. I'll, I'll write another one too, but thank you so much. And everyone, please give him a hand. Could you tell us a little bit about Shaw Development and what you make? I think it's a great story. Uh, if you're not familiar with us or our products, uh, we make uh, niche fluid management products for the heavy duty vehicle market. So if you were driving down the road and saw a Peterbilt truck go by, you would see our fuel caps that we manufacture here in Bonita on those trucks. Or if you saw a Caterpillar tractor, any model, or a John Deere tractor, uh, we make all the fluid management devices for them. Uh, caps, adapters, uh, sensors, gauges, and we make it in our factory right up here on, uh, right off of uh, Old 41 on, uh, on Burnwood Drive. Uh, we've hired uh, almost 100 people since we've been here in four, in four years, and uh, we really appreciate the city and everything that the community has done for us as well. So thank you. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay, everybody, uh, we are to the consent agenda, I believe. Is there anything, we have three, is there anything that anyone would like to pull from the consent agenda? Move to accept. We have a motion to accept. Is there a second? Second. Is a second by Peter. Uh, any comment? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Martin. Aye. Councilman Selecta. Aye. Mayor Nelson. Aye. Councilman Simmons. Aye. Councilwoman Simon. Aye. Councilman Longhart. Aye. Councilman McIntosh. Aye. Okay, Audrey, uh, first uh, public hearing and first reading and public hearing of the ordinance. Thank you. Let me put the microphone closer. This is an ordinance of the city of Bonita Springs, Florida, adopting amendments to its comprehensive plan, including amendments to the future land use map, text changes to the future land use element, creating the rural agricultural overlay district, adopting goals, objectives, and policies to encourage and promote a local food system approach and providing for a transmittal to the state land planning agency, providing a conflict clause and severability clause, providing an effective date and for other purposes. This is um, the first reading. It does require a public hearing at this time, along with um, a second reading and public hearing on October 17, 2012. Uh, we have taken it to the LPA multiple times. I think the LPA is tired of seeing it, who has reviewed it and actually worked on creating this 
and they did of course find it sufficient with the comp plan because they're recommending to put it in the comp plan we also received uh, today comments from Southwest Regional uh, Planning Council supporting uh, the letter didn't come in directly to us so it came in late uh, but you do have the other letters of approval in the packet from the other governmental entities um, I do have the affidavit publication there was a minor um, issue but it did look uh, technically sufficient yeah with the paper the paper will be making some corrections to it which is appropriate for the next uh, hearing because technically you can have just one reading but because of our charter I like to have two so okay. good but since the last time we've seen this no substantive changes absolutely no changes well that mm -hmm. that would be no not substantive good thank you absolutely very much no. Uh, at this time, Council, if we could, I'm going to go ahead and take public comment. If there is any, is there any members of the public wish to speak to this matter? Please come forward. Seeing none, uh, we'll close the public hearing. And uh, Council, what's your pleasure? Steve? Uh, just a quick comment. This uh, supports our sustainability strategy for the city, and I'd move to take this to second hearing. We have a motion to take it to uh, second hearing. Is there a second? Second. There's a second to it. Any other comments? Okay, and now what's the date for the second hearing? October 17th, um, 2012, starting at 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much. Okay. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Oh, good. That's better. Uh, roll call, please. Councilman Slacta? Aye. Mayor Nelson? Aye. Councilman Simmons? Aye. Councilwoman Simons? Aye. Councilman Lockhart? Aye. Councilman McIntosh? Aye. Councilwoman Martin? Aye. Okay, item 8B. Thank you. And this is a second public hearing, so it's the final public hearing. Uh, for review and approval of the development agreement with Benita Fort Myers Corporation, a uh, Florida corporation for the Naples Fort Myers Greyhound Racing and Poker Facility. In the event, slot machines are approved by referendum in the November election. It's a second reading. We had the first reading um, September 20th. Okay. Take a quick look. And uh, that is, it's a statutory <coughs> requirement. Okay. Um, and um, I'm going to go ahead, and, and uh, that's the reading. I'm going to go ahead and let Carl. Uh, frame this for us and then uh, we'll go ahead and let you interject. Great, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there were some comments made tonight and I, I just think it's important for us to uh, properly frame this discussion as the mayor indicated with some of the facts behind the agreement in front of you. First off, this, this tonight is not a vote on gambling, right? This is a vote uh, on an agreement uh, that provides terms of benefits for the property owner as well as the city in case the voters of Lee County pass uh, the referendum on uh, or the ballot initiative on November the 6th. Um, it is contingent upon that vote. Uh, should you decide to pass this agreement this evening, uh, obviously if there is a no vote on November the 6th, this will be null and void. It's also important for everybody to understand that even if there were a yes vote on November the 6th, there's still additional legislative action that needs to occur in Tallahassee to clarify uh, some of the language uh, in the state statutes uh, to allow this gaming to go forward. So slot machines will not be showing up on the property on November 7th if it's adopted on the 6th. There's additional work to be done likely in the spring of uh, 2013. This is a rolling 30-year term agreement. 30 years is a long time, um, but it's also renewable uh, and extendable each five years to maintain that 30-year agreement, all right? Um, much like actually the BSU agreement that we have with our franchise with them. This agreement provides what's in it for the property owner. It provides the property owner protections for the use of their property and from potential down zoning in the future by the city. Uh, they want a guarantee if they're going to make a long-term investment in this community uh, with regards to additions to this particular piece of property. They want a guarantee as to what they can and can't do and they're looking for that, uh, that protection through this agreement. They are agreeing through this uh, document to rename the facility by using the words Bonita Springs in the name and taking out the names Fort Myers and Naples. It is true that the city will receive one and a half percent of the first 
$250 million of annual gross slot revenues, which could approximate anywhere between $1 million to $3.75 million a year to the city. And again, it depends on how much activity there is uh, at the facility. And then beyond the $250 million mark, these are large numbers, I realize, that, that shifts to 2.5% for anything above $250 million. It is true that the owner has indicated all along that there would be 500 jobs involved here. Those are full-time jobs, to my understanding. Um, that has never changed, 500 jobs. What we were able to negotiate in this contract is that 40% of them will be coming from Bonita Springs. So it's not a reduction from 500 to 200. It is 40% uh, of Bonita residents of the 500 that have been promised. There's been questions about what kind of negotiations went on. And I will tell you that your staff has worked long and hard on this issue. We have not rolled over on this developer, even though they have been a good neighbor uh, and a good corporate citizen in this city for decades. We understand that this is a long-term agreement that we're looking at, but this, but this is also a voluntary agreement. This is not money that this developer has to offer this city. They could still go ahead and develop this property if the vote went right in November and the state legislature made the changes required. They could still go ahead and do that without offering the city a dime. Now, the city, of course, would still benefit because of our millage rate applied to the new assessed values that would be available after new construction and after renovation of their current facilities but we would not be getting one and a half percent or anything because this is voluntary. Part of the negotiation process was that we were concerned that the original suggestion brought in in these negotiations was that out of that one and a half percent the city was going to get, that we would provide credits to the developer to the property owners for all of their development related review fees and their impact fees. Uh, that to, to us was a deal killer and we indicated that the, the, the philosophy behind the one and a half percent was to assist the city in offsetting uh, the cost of any potential uh, changes, increases in the demand for public services because of the existence of this particular facility. That's the reason for the one and a half percent. We needed to protect that money for that purpose. And during this negotiation, we were successful in working with the developer in this agreement to provide for a development fee cap. And what that means is that this developer will pay what any other developer would pay if they were going to build the same size facility in this town in terms of review fees, in terms of impact fees, with no reimbursement from the city. That number is $6.9 million. So the change really was we went from a request for credits against our 1.5%, which means if those amounts were about seven million dollars and we were going to get maybe a million dollars a year from the one and a half percent we would not have seen a dime for seven years but in fact what we've got is we've got in this agreement the ability to collect the review fees and the impact fees on this proposed development up to a number of six point nine million dollars in years zero through seven then on top of that is the one and a half uh, percent. As proposed, the development will also provide for 465,000 square feet of new construction and renovation of the 120,000 square foot existing facility. 
This, of course, is subject, subject to change. So the only thing that we need to concern ourselves with when it comes to the development fee cap is that should the city change the rules and perhaps, for example, increase the impact fees, um, then the developer is protected from that kind of action on the part of the city. However, the city is also protected with the development fee cap in this agreement because should the developer decide instead of building half a million square feet, they want to build 600,000 square feet, then we have the ability to renegotiate the development fee cap and further protect the city and the 1.5% uh, monies that are due to the city each year. Staff feels that this is a good agreement for the city for today, for the long term. The city attorney has done research with regards to other agreements of this type and have found that there are no better agreements than the ones we have here. In fact, we actually have, on certain cases, we have bettered the agreement. <clears throat> we feel it's good for the city. We're recommending approval tonight. We stand by for any questions you might have. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Council, do you have any questions? Yes. Yeah. Carl, you'd said 40% of the jobs would be from Bonita Spring. That's a minimum, correct? I mean, it could be more than that? That's correct, correct. sir. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Full time. Good. Um, Stephen. Carl, could you answer the uh, question that was uh, asked before about the county share? Yes, sir. Um, thank you for mentioning that. The, the county share is 1.5% also. <coughs> um, they do not have a rolling 30-year term, so that will end at some point in time. Um, and they are not involved in any of the development fee caps. There's no protections for them. But again, they're not really involved in getting a lot of impact fees from developments of, of this sort. The 1.5% was offered to the county by the developer, um, at my understanding, and I suspect they will come up and straighten out anything I've messed it up, but my understanding it was offered to the county, understanding that there was going to be some mitigation required on the part of the county. When you take a look at the situation, <clears throat> the county sheriff's department is the one providing um, security services to the city. I would expect that a portion of the 1.5% going to the county would go to the Sheriff's Department to assist with any additional policing needs in the area, okay? Not on site because the developers indicated they're going to cover that, all right? I would also expect that if the developer has a large uh, event, much like you've seen at baseball games, if they have a large event, that they will also be providing um, traffic control to get people in and out of their site. But in terms of general policing in our area, we would expect for that county money to assist with that. Also, when you take a look at the roads involved here, Bonita Springs or Bonita Beach Road is a county facility. It is not a city facility. So some of that money should go to DOT at the county level. Old 41 is a city facility, and therefore we would have maybe some requirements there based upon how the developer plans to actually access their property and, and handle the crowds that they're expecting. The city was not involved in any discussions between the county and the developer uh, with regards to that 1.5%. Uh, it was made uh, m very early on uh, to the county uh, when the county was deciding whether or not this was going to be a ballot issue in November. Um, and that agreement was passed along at the same time that uh, the county decided to put this on the ballot in November. Mm -hmm. Thank you, okay. sir. Good. Any other? Yes, Martha. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to be voting yes on the referendum in November. I don't gamble. I was in a casino once uh, when I was 15 years old in Puerto Rico, but, you know, I don't, I don't go to them because um, they let kids go in there. Anyhow, um, I'm reading here on the second page of the green sheet. Let's see. Hmm, it, we don't have item letters or numbers on it, but um, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. The six item down, a little check mark, um, it talks about the monthly percentage payments will include all occupational or license fees on the facility. Uh, 
I want to draw your attention to Florida State Chapter 551. And I don't know if they're including these license fees. So if it does not, the state license fee is like $3 million, okay, uh, for the first year, way back when, when they started this thing up over in the other counties, and then $2 million in 2011 and 2012. So um, is it really clear in the development agreement, since I don't have it on my iPad right here in front of me, and this is one little detail I didn't look at, um, that this is for city license fees only? I'm going to find to okay. the page. Give okay. me a moment. And then the other thing is, um, you know, they did... Um, they have been in the city for a long time, and I haven't seen any ongoing crime coming out of there. Um, I haven't heard any issues from people coming there. Uh, my neighbors go there. They seem to enjoy it, and they still own their homes and stuff, so that's a good thing. But the, um, <laughs> yeah. um, the comment about the, sta the tax, we can't tax them. In the state law, it says only the state can tax them, and that um, they tax them at 35%. That's awesome. Um, how nice of them. And they keep those taxes. Number one, does any of that come back to our area like we do you it know, does in revenue the sharing? It does um, No, it goes to the an education trust fund, and then we get our allocation. That's right. That. So if we, ta if we said, oh, we'd like to impose a tax just in case we could, we wouldn't enjoy that in any other way in our city, we wouldn't have control or jurisdiction because it would go to the state education enhancement fund. Correct. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if it's the enhancement fund, but it's one of the education funds. In, 551, in 551, yeah, right. Um, um, I did look it up in section eight and it does say license fees as may be required by the codes of the city. So no, they're not talking about 551 codes or 551 license. Well, I, I just hope we have it, that real clear, clear so somebody in the future says, well, look, it says no license fees, and that comes $2 million right off there, uh, and that would just cut anything that we might potentially get in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and the paramutual permit, um, sorry I had to look all this stuff up, but, you know, it's my job. Uh, the paramutual permit, I don't know what the cost of that is, but I just want to make real clear that for both those fees, uh, we are not including them in that f that uh, one phraser. The other thing, um, right, that would not be covered under that that no. clause. No, these are things that the city would try to create or possibly could create. They want to make sure none of that is okay. Now, okay, good. So it, we don't have an occupational license. Right. Nobody has one, but business tax receipt. We won't have those. We're preempted on that. So cool. Um, the other thing is mm, $250 million of annual gross slot revenues. What was that referring to? I wrote that down because when we talk about what the percentage is for the first $250 million, mm -hmm. okay, it's a lot of money, um, we're talking annual gross slot revenues. In the state law, it talks about what the slot machine revenues are, and their d definition under 551 is s all cash and property minus the cash, cash equivalents, credits, and prizes that are paid out. And they have to pay out up to 85%? No, about 93% is what they, uh, th this one pays out about 93% for Flagler. They normally pay between 90 and 93 percent, according to my Florida license. Okay, well, but what I'm saying is that according to Florida state statutes, what minimum. we would consider a slot machine revenue then would be that other 7 percent. Would that be correct? I believe that would be correct. I can give you an analysis. So it's not on, he's shaking his head yes back there. So it's not on the state, on the whole revenue of like 250 million annual gross slot revenue unless you're considering that it's 7% is that 250 million of annual gross slot revenue. It would be taking out that 83% that would be the machines payout. Yep. And it would be taking out any kind of non-redeemable credits, like if they gave free play. Mm -hmm. It would be taking out any kind of other prizes or cash equivalents that are provided from the machines. So that would all be taken out before they are able to, all right. Um, before we calculate what the one and a half percent is, is correct. that correct? correct? So the 250 million would be only 7%. Multiply that by 90, you know, the other. 
of how much a machine gets in the machine. Yes. Uh, let me. Do you understand Mayor? what my yes, calculation is yes. that I'm looking at why don't, here? Why, why, don't, why don't we do it this way? Why don't you, Mayor? Why don't you ex explain the payment schedule just kind of from the sure. beginning, how that works? As so I that. understand it, uh, the way it works is that um, the machines um, all have, they, the, the state makes sure that the machines are properly paying Calibrated. out and such, and I'm sure there's different averages of what they're supposed to pay at each given time. Um, an example I was given was if there was somebody put $100,000, or many people, obviously not one person, put $100,000 in a slot machine, if they ended up with nothing, the city would get $1,500. You know, if at the end of the time, now, usually you put money in a machine, I know you're not familiar with it, but normally uh, somebody puts the machine, they still have credits on that machine, and they still continue to play what they have on the bucks. machine. They don't cash out each time. Sometimes people do. Um, at the end of the, and usually people go from machine to machine, so I try to tell people, don't look at it that way, look at it on a per machine basis. And so if a machine receives, say in a night, $100,000 in, in pay, let's say that machine pays out 90000 in both big jackpots and little jackpots, a couple bucks here, a big one or here and there. That would be the slot machine revenue that is talked about in the statute, and that's defined in the statute, and that would be, say, 10000 Dollars because of the hundred thousand, ninety thousand was paid up to to people. Of that ten thousand, a city would get one hundred and fifty dollars. It sounds kind of low, but when you look at and what I would suggest is looking at my Florida license, which is put out by the Division of Business and Professional Regulation, mm -hmm. and they have all the slot machines in Miami Dade and Broward calculated. They also have other types of gambling calculated, so you can see the revenue and what it projects. Um, each facility has a certain number of machines. So some places have 1,200 machines, some places have like, you know, 1,000 machines, 800, 600, you know, different machines. And each machine brings in somewhere each day around that 150 to possibly up to 300. There's like averages per, and, and they run it that way. Um, so then when you multiply it per machine per day, it comes up to quite a bit different revenue. Um, I did run the revenue for uh, their sister facility, which is Magic City, which last year to the state of Florida, and I only went for the whole years because it's hard to prorate. Um, their facility, and remember there's about six facilities, Miami has paid out $80,462,837. Now that was based on um, that net revenue that we're talking about, not how much money went they into the They paid out to the game players, or they no, paid to the state. That's how much was left that's the out. net number you're that's talking about. That's the net, net okay. money <clears throat> that was left in the machines after they did all that payout at about, mm -hmm. now their payout for that machine was 93%, 93.2%, and each machine at their facility averaged about $300 per machine, a lot of places it's more about $150 per machine. A lot of it depends on day. how much action is in the machine, what type of machine. Some people want the Wheel of Fortune one, the Michael Jackson one. There's all these okay. different machines. Uh, just now, just, just to kind of put the lid on this maybe a little bit and help help everybody out here is that the, the main thing about this agreement is that we are trying to stay consistent with the way everybody else incurs their revenue or gets their revenue and by the same calculations so it's not so confusing I mean no, and let me go into right, that uh, because that was a good question that was asked by one of the gentlemen up here the county under the state statute is the one who has to do the referendum and we we talked about that at our last meeting it's not as if the city can adopt its own referendum <laughs> this is one where the state statute requires it to be a county referendum so they did offer the county the money now Miami-Dade and Broward, it's the same amount of money, the one and a half percent, both to the counties and the cities. Um, in the county, they structured it as a strict payout agreement. The cities, they like to have a development agreement. Uh, there's a lot of similarities between all of the development I'm, agreements. I'm referring, let me get you back on track. Um, the calculation, the way that, they, mm -hmm. that the revenues they're calculating, the way the payments are calculated, are they consistent? Yes. With, yes. And they are. And I will add, too, that this particular agreement allows the city to go in and audit the numbers um, that are provided to the city when 
payments are are made out okay and okay. I will tell you that Councilmember Simons is exactly right even though we think it sounds like it's a net number for us because it's the gross minus these other things that's the way the state law defines it right. and we are looking again at the facilities on the East Coast anywhere between 80 and 120 million dollars is that net gross number and that's where the one and a half percent would come from but these are state definitions but go ahead that's, Martha. yeah well ahead. we have to work under the state definitions too so God's calling <laughs> okay Go ahead. Dead poet Carry on. Okay. Okay. So what what I want to get to is this two and a half percent kick in thing. Okay, where we we would possibly go up to there, if if we're calculating uh, just the seven percent that we're going to be getting the one and a half percent from. Can somebody help me out here? What would that number have to be for the other ninety three percent for total? You know activity at the at the uh, Bonita Springs whatever place it's going to be called um, uh, in order that's the thank My you calculator won't go that high I'm just telling you uh, well that's see yeah. well what I'm billions. saying is that I don't know we'll ever get to the two and a half percent because mm, the 93 percent 250 million is the seven percent I mean that's a lot of dough and I don't know if they're going to have that much money over there I think we better create Fort Knox I can tell you that Pompano Harness was the highest last year in revenue, and they received, now this is off that net number, so of course the gross number would be much higher of what went into the machines, 120862000 So um, none of the places now in Miami or Metro Dade, Broward, there's a lot of facilities. Yes. So this, here you only have this facility, and then there's the um, the Indian facility. And Indian facilities don't have these type of agreements because they build on a reservation, so the reservations aren't in any okay. cities. Okay, so it would it would be a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it'd be like a billion something dollars, some billion dollars. I mean, yeah. you I, know. I'll take a run. I took. You taking a chance? I, at the it? mathematicians around here can correct me, but oh. I took two hundred and fifty million dollars divided by seven percent. To get me the number and 3.5 billion, what it was. Yeah. So I mean, really, 3.5 billion in slots over there to get to two and a half percent? That's not going to happen. I mean, in my dreams, it might. But I mean, okay. My, I think my point is made on that. Okay. Ben. Thank you very much, Bill. Perhaps if we reverse the uh, one and a half and got the two and a half up front, we would probably be in uh, much more better territory. I think you're right. Uh, but I only say that as I looked at this and I, I, I know what you two did and you worked on it. I'm not suggesting you didn't do a commendable job, not, not that at all. But I do think that we should, I'm not so, so, so inclined to rush this through tonight because of those, that circumstance. Martha brought out a good point and, uh, more than one good point, and uh, I think that needs to be really looked at very closely because we're also doing a 30-year deal, which I'm not inclined to. Uh, You'd rather have money for a shorter period of time? Well, <laughs> all I can tell you is that we already have one in place, and that uh, continues, but that's not a casino. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Uh, yeah, go ahead. The, uh, the uh, Carl, your approach has been questioned here um, you know our job's not to do the grunt work you do our job's to criticize whatever you do apparently so I know what you've done would you describe broadly where this thing started to how you got to where you are today I think it's the question is did you really get everything you think you can get okay the answer is I think I've gotten everything I can get this is a voluntary agreement uh, as I indicated before so really they don't have to offer this money uh, I will tell you frankly that the one and a half percent they absolutely would not move off of I made several attempts to get them above that number um, and they would not do it because and and they're sitting in the audience and I'm sure they'll confirm this but um, they feel that they are exposed to other agreements that they've already made elsewhere in the state um, and they did not want to be in a situation where 
uh, if we were able to negotiate a higher percentage take on this, um, that they would have to offer that to everybody else under favored nations. Um, so they were not interested in doing that. Um, I then came back and asked for um, a reduction in the $250 million down to a lower number, $100 million, $150 million, so that we would be able to pick up our 2.5% sooner. Uh, they again refused to do that, again, because of the agreements they have elsewhere in the state. Uh, so the bottom line is, is that, uh, frankly, we considered it a win that we were able to uh, get the percentage of hires that are going to come out of Bonita Springs for the new jobs. We considered it a big win to get the development fee cap in. Um, that's, like I said, $6.9 million. We wouldn't have to reimburse them. Uh, that's going to be coming out of their pocket. And so, you know, we're basically, we feel that we have done everything we can do with regards to this agreement. Well, the, the one of the questions fellow council members brought up were changes in the percentages and the minimums and so on. If we did not approve this tonight and you went back to work, uh, is it simply delaying the same contract? Or are, have we made enough comments here tonight, do you think, to the, to the owners to be able to say, hey, you know, there's some concerns on council's part that we need to talk about. And I'm asking you because you've done this sort of thing before. I think, I, I think that they're willing to do certain things and not willing to do others. Um, it kind of sets the parameters for negotiations. Um, I, I don't know that they would move off of what we're proposing tonight okay. just because they're too exposed elsewhere in the state. Okay. That's my opinion. Maybe you need to ask Mr. Havnick that. But. Well, I may ask him that, but yes. I, that, I have a, another professional in the audience that I would like to have come up. The question, one of the questions in my mind has always been the ancillary problems that come along with uh, this kind of an operation. And if, if Captain Reardon would, wouldn't mind coming up, I tried not to hit her cold on this, and that's why I had a little powwow over here. But I'm your, sorry. Is this the expert that you're going to call up? <laughs> 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 Oh, awesome. no, Me and Kathy were like this. No, but she's it. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Cameron, in, in your experience in law enforcement, and you have clearly seen this thing over in Immokalee, you've seen it other places from your professional acquaintances in other parts of the state. When something like this happens, do you what kind of a impact do you have criminally? What do you see in terms of ex extended uh, law enforcement needs and so on? What I see here is uh, not a great impact to law enforcement. Um, as you know, they already have specific types of gambling at the dog track. Results in very little, if any, problems for the Sheriff's Department. Uh, Lieutenant Sedwick and I were just speaking about it, and we can't recall the last time we were at the dog track on a complaint. Um, sometimes when you add in the extra games and what they have, similar to what they have in Immokalee, um, occasionally you'll see an increase in maybe some disorderly conduct um, due to the extra cars in the parking lot depending on the security that they set up in that scenario you could see some car burglaries things of that nature but I don't anticipate seeing any uh, major increase in crime uh, with the dog tracks location uh, I've been to several of the casinos around the state Immokalee now is much bigger than it was years ago and I was recently over in Hollywood at their casino which is huge um, very little problems I've, I've never seen any problems over there ever um, so I, I don't anticipate that the dog track is going to have a big impact on our uh, required need uh, however we'll play it by ear and okay. obviously we have a very good working relationship always have uh, with the dog track and I'm sure if we start to see any issues they're going to jump on it probably faster than we're going to see it Okay, thank you no. Okay, good any other questions for Kathy while she's up here? Yeah, uh, no, I, I, I just think it's good. Hi, how are Hi, you? Very good. Just to maybe explain a little bit. I mean, people say crime and problems associated. Could you just kind of lay some of those out for the people watching at home? Um, well, I'm there There are gaming businesses that are out there currently that have slot machine type of games in them. Um, and again, like I said, some of the 
minor problems that you may see is a customer who becomes in intoxicated, disorderly, they're upset, uh, and we're called to come deal with that situation. Usually they're, they're very minor in nature. Um, but that any, could be at any local restaurant. That could be at any local or restaurant. Council it, meeting. <laughs> it could be at. Um, <laughs> it, it could be at a, you know, Christmas party. It, it, that down. could be anywhere. Yeah. Uh, anytime you have a big draw, uh, and I won't throw any of our bigger arenas out there, but anytime you have any kind of concerts or an area where cars are left in a parking lot, there's always the potential for car burglars to target those areas, just as they do at the malls. Um, so you can anticipate some of those type of problems, but uh, at the casinos that I've been to that are currently in the state of Florida, um, the security in those parking lots is phenomenal. I mean, uh, people feel comfortable walking out to their cars um, in the dead of night, but uh, those are some of the problems that you could run into. And there's probably so much security that there might even likely be less problems, correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. And again, I don't, where the dog track is set up and the makeup of where it's at, there's, I, I don't see that there's going to be a big issue with any kind of uh, spill out where somebody's going to leave the dog track disorderly and wander into a neighborhood. It's a possibility. Um, however, I think with the steps that they have in place currently, they would be stopped before they were ever off the property and put in a cab and sent home or other arrangements be made. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Any other questions? Sure. Kevin? Thank you. You got one? No? Good? Oh, good. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Have a good uh, Thanks Kev. Just want to make a couple of Go ahead. Oh. Thanks. She's awesome. Awesome. Um, uh, I just want to, uh, this agreement, uh, Council, in my opinion, uh, you can't, I don't think you can focus on one, on one small part of it. I think this is agreement that is so large. And the effect of this is going to be, I think you, if you want to argue either way, positive, negative, whatever, I think it's going to be a positive effect on us. I think there are so many ways that the city is going to benefit from this. There are so many different parameters in here, the development of that area. I think you have to look at this, this agreement in the context of everything there. You just can't pull out the 1.5 or 2.5 percent. But we've known all along because I think one of the first things that, that Izzy did was step up here and tell us, look, the, the margins on this type of business aren't what you think they are. There, there's not a lot, a real lot of money left over because the state makes you pay out a certain amount. We, we knew that, we should have known that going into this. The margins are very narrow. So knowing that, you can expect them, well, everything that you make, you can just, well, you're going to give... 1.5 to them, some to the state, some to us. We want more. After a while, it's like, well, what's the point? I mean, I mean, what's the point? We're not going to, you, you have to allow, I mean, I think we have to say this about any business that we have into our community. You can't tax them to a point where they can't make a dollar. I mean, you, you just, j that's just bad business. All right. And so I think we can make the arguments about, about whether ethically or it should be done or this or that. Fine. Make those arguments. But so far as a business model, I think that this is, a, this is a good contract. I think it protects the city. I think where we have to be more vigilant is that like anything else, when this, a large development of this kind comes in our community, it's going to be up to us to be sure that those ancillary businesses that come out around those, we have to be sure to protect the community. We have to be sure that those are zoned correctly. We have to be sure that the community develops in a proper manner. I think that's gonna be up to us. Okay? Amen. Uh, any, any other discussion here? Uh, we, did, Audrey, I, do we need to have public comment on I this? I guess you do. And I do wanna point out um, okay. the agreement right now on page um, 14, there was some fill in the blanks. Um, a couple times they referred to themselves as Bonita Springs instead of Bonita Springs owner. And there were some areas where it said X's and they weren't complete. I did give suggested language. I would request that if you do approve it tonight, um, approve it so I can make the changes on that page along with, you know, the example, as long as the example accurately reflects the agreement. Okay, uh, one other question, then we'll one go to public one. comment. If in the next year, I know the state legislature is going to have to make some kind of finding, but if the state legislature, because gambling is under their purview, um, comes up with an agreement for statewide or something, will that nullify what our personal agreement is with the, with the uh, owners? 
I think we'd have a good impairment of contract issue against the state of Florida at that point. Um, the, I will tell you that this agreement is comparable to the agreements in Miami-Dade and Broward, which the state has has been involved in the state issue since, um, was it? 2002, 2000, 2007 or 2004. So the agreements have been in place, so they're, they're very similar type of model, so it's not something very different in that regard, so I would not anticipate that. So an impairment of contract would mean the state would have to pay us loss of revenues that they might want to take away, likely? Uh -huh. um, there's some constitutional rights that I'd have to do further research, but yes, basically. I don't know if the state would have to pay us, but we would have some arguments there. Well, they just like preempting local governments all the time. They love so. to do that. Right. I know. Well, thank you very much, Good Mayor. Good deal. Uh, Peter? And, and we've touched on it, and I'm reading it here, but I just want to bring it up. Uh, it says the owner will rename its facility to take out the Naples Fort Myers dog track using Bonita Springs as part of the name. Have we settled on a name? or we're, That's still. It's not us to settle. That's no, I, I, I understand. I understand, but I'm just throwing it out there. Go so, Bonita. Like I said, Go Bonita, Bonita, Springs. Bonita Springs, laundromat. <laughs> Bonita Springs. Who, know, who knows what it might pick? Determine how pleasant <laughs> you guys are. All right. Uh, at this time, we'll go ahead and have public comment. Any uh, member of the public wishing to speak to this issue, please come mm -hmm. forward. Okay. Yes, Rick Steinmeier. Uh, I'd like to, as former mayor of Survey, <laughs> uh, I'd like to uh, compliment the Havnack family for their contribution. To the opponent of mine, uh, I was running against uh, Mr. Simons. I was the campaign manager for uh, Joseph Cofield, and okay. your $5,300 contribution came out of nowhere and just beat the socks off everybody. But it was uh, a very successful campaign for the Historical Society. Um, of course, the, the Lions Club threw another $2,000 in it, so it was a... Uh, ended up being like $13,000 for Historical Society. And I applaud you and, and Martha Simons Hi. and her husband, Bill. Also, the, the, uh, if maybe Mayor Nelson will remember that we, we put a um, small, well, it's not too small, a tax on the dog track years ago, which amounts to uh, between eight and $10,000 a year. Uh, which they've paid diligently over the last eight or 10 years, however long it's been there. And uh, they are good neighbors, and uh, I hope the referendum goes through, because then all those snowbirds that come down, they can drop the money off and then go home. <laughs> um, also, now as far as that one and a half percent, is explained to me if the profit, it should be profit rather than gross, the profit was a hundred million dollars the city would get one and a half million dollars well that means the city the people in the city have to leave a, a hundred a nine hundred uh, leave a hundred million dollars at the dog track I don't know who else is gonna have any money left who's got a hundred million dollars to drop off so he does. but it's voluntary you don't have to go to the dog track so and uh, I'm a winner at the dog track. Don't tell anybody, but I owe him $1,000. Thank you. Whoa. <laughs> Anyone else like to expose themselves? I mean, uh, <laughs> to come up here and uh, speak. Yes, uh, Alex oh, Grant okay. again here. Uh, correct, uh, if I understand this correctly, okay, let's say it's $250 million, and I'm just doing it 90%. It's, I know it's 90, but okay, 90%. Uh, you would have uh, the payout two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, or two hundred whatever. Uh, it's it, ninety percent of two hundred and fifty million dollars is two hundred twenty-five million dollars. So that's uh, let's say uh, twenty-five million dollars is the actual proper uh, the profit. This is b based on ninety percent, which I know it's not okay. 1.5% of the 25 million would be something like $375,000. Is that correct? More well, or less? well, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, in other words, the 300 let, let's say uh, uh, 375,000 goes to Lee County. 
hypothetically, that pays for four sheriff's deputies, let's say, around uh, one deputy per eight-hour shift, okay? Then if we get another 375000 or so, then, we, then that would pay for an additional one deputy uh, for an eight-hour shift. So that would be two deputies for the surrounding area uh, on a 24-hour basis. Am I correct? Somewhere around there? Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Anyone else this time? Please come forward. I, I figured I'd only bore you all once. Yeah, um, I wonder when you wandered up here. Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, the manager, the city attorney, and the staff. Uh, Mr. Manager, Madam Attorney, people of Benita really don't know how lucky they are to have two people like you fighting in their and corner. Izzy, I'm sorry. Could you give your name for the record? Sure. Because sorry. I'm Izzy Havanick with the Benita Springs Dog Track. Thank you very much. Yeah, carry on. Oh, um, the it's name. because thank I was you. being nice to Carl and Audrey. I know you oh, stopped me. Springs thank dog track? Benita Springs Dog Track. Okay. Um, but they really don't know how lucky they are to have you guys. Um, you guys fought tirelessly and very hard uh, to make sure this was the best deal for the residents of Benita Springs. Um, to answer a couple of the questions that have flown around tonight. First of all, the simple way to do the math is, and you know, you know me, I like to be the dumbest guy in the room, is we only get taxed on money we make. If people bet and they win, we don't make the money. Federal government, the state government, you guys, you figure out a way to tax the people when they take the money home. So we only get taxed on money we make. So that's the easiest way to look at it. it it's called, it, the reason it's defined as gross is because that's all we take in. So 35% of that goes to the state, plus licensing fee, plus money. Um, the, the casino industry funds the compulsive gambling um, rehabilitation for the state of Florida. I think we're the only industry in the state that actually funds um, the problematic side. Um, and then, uh, so everybody gets their piece off of what we keep. Um, for the jobs, they're all full-time jobs. I, I heard you ask a couple times. Actually, today at our second job fair, we hired two Bonita Springs residents right on the spot. Um, so we're already growing and we're already employing. Um, but um, we want to work with you. I think you will, um, all know that. Um, that's the way my family operates. Um, many times people have come in and tried to buy that piece of property from us. Um, be it for a casino or for another project. And we like being here. We like working with you all. We like this community and we want to continue to grow with the community and be able to give back to the community. I think my public speaking would have gotten better at this point, but, um, but that's really it. I, it, it we, we consider you guys our partners and we look forward to 30, 60, 80, 90, um, you know, my grandkids up here with your grandkids uh, doing the same thing and working together. So thank you all for all your time. Carl, Audrey, again, thank you all for your hard work and all your staffs. And um, hopefully we'll win on November 6th. And this will be a good problem to have on November 7th. <laughs> thank you very much. Anyone else this time? Please come forward. <clears throat> Ron Pure, TAG at Benita Springs. Uh, yeah, a lot of questions, but we're limited, huh? I'm limited. Uh, first, let's, 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 let's put this into perspective. The leverage we have here is that this is the first slot casino will be in southwest Florida, on the west coast of Florida. Mr. McIntosh asked earlier, thank you for doing that, uh, Mr. Schwing, about uh, what would happen if you postponed the vote and looked more at uh, what has been going on here. Uh, Mr. Schwing didn't say uh, it would be a bad idea. I didn't hear that. And I think it would be a real good idea because I think other things must be considered. Now, Lee County, Lee County, yeah. Lee County uh, gets from us $12 million a year as taxpayers in the city, $12 million a year. We give Lee County three to four, sometimes over $4 million a year uh, for the library. Uh, three to four million or maybe more for EMS and various and sundry other, uh, other things, in addition to the fact that we've helped finance their roads, um, their own roads, Benita Beach Road and some other roads around the city, 
uh, over the years. Uh, we have uh, helped them out considerably, but they nevertheless made a grab for a point and a half. And I didn't hear anybody here say that they tried to intervene in that. Again, that's a total of three if you include your point and a half, and it's nowhere near where we ought to be. Is it voluntary? Yeah, I guess the deal is voluntary. And any time I hear one of the, uh, one of the uh, components uh, flatter the other side, I really begin to worry. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Mr. Havnick is delighted with uh, Mr. Schwing and Ms. Mrs. Vance. Now, I know some in the uh, administration that go back many years and have hammered out some of the, let's say, highly questionable and not so good done deals when it comes to franchises. I'll name two. They're probably the biggest money grabbers in the city. Well, electric company may be one. Maybe phone is two. But Comcast and BSU rank up there. And there are many in the city that question those, uh, those, comp uh, those agreements. Matter of fact, there are people in the city, on city staff, that had their eyebrows raised recently about a, uh, a component of the BSU franchise. This is a, um, oh, by the way, also Ms. Vance, Audrey, 93% on a machine is not really a good way to clarify the situation. The, situ the situation is the state says at least 85% will go back I have to the game. Easy, easy, let's, okay. public, public comment. Unless that's changed recently. 85%. That leaves them 15%. The numbers, again, are astronomical, as spelled out a bit earlier. Uh, I think that we should be, uh, show extreme wisdom here and not let this fly at this point. More work ought to be done. And, uh, and by the way, being that they'll be the first ones on the west coast of Florida, getting the same thing that other places are getting or have gotten is not good enough. It's about time we raise the standard in Bonita Springs on many, many things. This is among them. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Anyone else this time? Please come forward. Seeing none, uh, we'll post, uh, close public comment. Uh, staff, do you have anything to add before we uh, have our way with you here? <laughs> to speak. Uh, <laughs> uh, Council, what's your pleasure? Make a motion to approve. Yeah, make a motion to approve as uh, and uh, with the changes that Audrey has suggested. Second. Said there's a second to that. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Mayor Nelson. Aye. Councilman Simmons. Aye. Councilwoman Simons. Aye. Councilman Longhart. Aye. Councilman McIntosh. Aye. Councilwoman Martin. Aye. Councilman Slatter. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Uh, Audrey, do you have anything else for us? Uh, not, well, on the next part of the agenda. Okay, good, good, I always check. Uh, at this time, we will have uh, public comment again, and uh, this time on any item. Anyone wishing to speak on any, any item, please come forward. <coughs> oh, going, going. Hello, <laughs> I'm Kathy McGrath again, Special Events Committee, one thing. I just want to remind everybody at this time, don't forget, Fish Fry the 26th and Riverfest the 27th of October. We'd like to see you there. And the other thing I want to mention is on November 3rd, the Friends at Nature Place, we're going to have another sky watching event. So keep your eyes open for that. That's the only thing I like to bring up. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else this time? Please come forward. Seeing none, public comments over, and uh, now we are to the city attorney's report. And at which point I'm now going to say what I have on the agenda, which I'm asking you to look at 15 resolutions. They're all resolutions of necessity for the Shangri-La Road extension and drainage system. Approval of these resolutions does not mean we are filing the lawsuits against all of these folks uh, tomorrow. Uh, there are some that we will be filing soon. Uh, but there are some that we are very close to agreements, and uh, we're going to wait on those, as well as a few others um, that are out there. Um, they are on the remainder properties, and to meet our deadlines, we do need to go forward with the resolutions. In Council, what's your pleasure? Motion to approve? Are you? Oh, no. I will make a motion to approve. I'm always a little uncomfortable uh, with him in the domain, but I did go through the numbers and looked at a per dollar per acre 
and it's certainly reasonable. We tried to hire an appraiser who would give a very fair appraisal. So I'll make that motion. We have a motion to approve uh, the 15 uh, um, eminent domain items. Uh, is there a second? Second. I have a second. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Councilman Simmons? Aye. Councilwoman Simons? Aye. Councilman Lockhart? Uh, aye. Councilman McIntosh? Aye. Councilwoman Martin? Aye. Councilman oh. Slechta? Aye. Mayor Nelson? Aye. And that's on nope. all 15 resolutions. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Anything else for us right there? Yes, sir. Good. Thank you very much. The city manager's report. We are up to you, Carl. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first off, uh, just item A, which is scheduling a follow-up workshop to discuss downtown Bonita redevelopment. Uh, we would like to come back with you with some ideas, specific ideas and recommendations uh, for, your, for your thoughts. Uh, this is, of course, based upon the prior workshop we held a couple of months ago. Um, if I might, Mr. Mayor, um, if you're comfortable, I'm looking at November. Um, I am looking at Monday the 5th, uh, the morning of Monday the 5th, or Tuesday morning the 13th, or Monday morning the 19th. And if you would like us to maybe just send that out to you in email form, would that be yeah, easier? Can we do that? Easier. If you just go ahead and email us, and then we can all kind of commit if you say yes or no on that, and uh, then give us the good or bad news. We'll and if it. we have to do something else, then we'll go we're, from there. We're happy to do Council, that. Council, is that okay? Absolutely. Right. All right. And I only have one other item, and that is to officially announce to you and to the public that um, next week at the International City Manager Conference in Phoenix. Phoenix. The city of Bonita Springs uh, will be spotlighted as one of only 12 cities in the entire country, actually the world, uh, for something we do very well. And that can be duplicated across uh, uh, the country and other municipalities. And that's the way we uh, foster and care for and benefit from our partnerships here in this community. And I'll just tell you, this is a great honor for uh, this city um, to be um, spotlighted as one of 12. Um, and it'll also end up on the ICMA TV website for a year. Um, I'm hoping that this positive exposure may well be beneficial to our economic development efforts as well. So I just wanted to make sure that the council and the public were aware of that. And uh, we, of course, appreciate the council's support in all our partnerships including our volunteers, who do a great job every day in this city. And with that, that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and we are to mayor and uh, council member items and reports. And we'll start with A, which is uh, something from uh, Councilwoman Simons. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. This um, came through the uh, Florida League of Cities Energy and Environmental Quality Workshop. Uh, I'm not asking that we support specifically this plastic bag policy, but the De uh, Department of Environmental Protection in, in uh, Florida did come forward to make some recommendations because they see the harm that plastic bags do. And I certainly, you know, understand how we very much appreciate these plastic bags, you know, for being able to carry things and you color your hair, you can put one on your head. There's all sorts of things you can do with these bags. Uh, people well, that's make, just me. Do you know people crochet <laughs> with plastic bags? And uh, they cre it's called plarn. They create a yarn out of plastic <laughs> bags. People are very creative about recycling their plastic bags. But overall, um, all, I think all plastic bags are made outside of the United States. Um, and they're polluting our environment. I think there's a better... Uh, these wonderful bags made out of corn. Why not those? Anyhow, I think Americans are very innovative and we can come up with a better idea than plastic that breaks into little pieces and goes into our oceans, waterways, chokes our, chokes our um, sea turtles and glums up our stormwater management systems. And, and uh, country, whole countries have banned these bags. I'm only asking you to conceptually consider a resolution, not this particular legislation. I know in the past we've done so, uh, considered plastic bag policy uh, statewide. We have a uniform one, kind of kick this thing off. I understand the Retailers <coughs> Association is concerned about this. I understand groups have been working with Publix and uh, they're coming forward with some innovative strategies. So I think it was a very good idea posed by um, uh, Ms. Ross that we work together in a thoughtful way with uh, business and um, that we 
do move forward to it because just like with a fertilizer, you know, you're going to have all these stakeholders involved, but we should move forward for a statewide uniform plastic bag policy. So uh, would, would it be fair to say that you would, uh, you would be asking us at the least to go ahead and um, uh, give Carol our, our lobbyist instructions that if she sees a piece of legislation come through to bring it back to us and let us take a look at it and see if it's something we want to join in is that what you're suggesting? well that yeah that's one thing there is a um, piece of legislation in your packet um, a very fat piece of packet um, in paper form which I like to get electronically to save the paper too um, that uh, is suggested legislation from the East Coast from Cutler Bay supported by uh, South Miami city of South Miami I don't say that we necessarily support that that's their approach that's one voice in this but um, I did speak to Audrey about this and that uh, maybe <coughs> if council would consider a broader um, kind of resolution at a next council meeting that we can deliver to Carol so that uh, she can she can give that in support of uh, t to our legislators that we are interested in some kind of statewide policy and let, they're not going to take Cutler Bay's policy and they're not going to take South Miami's support for that policy, you know, as the written legislation. There's going to be a lot of hammering and a lot of, uh, you know, um, discussions among the stakeholders. But I would like to see us uh, offer a resolution that Carol can carry forward, a broad one that maybe so she can bring back at the next meeting. So you're, you're wanting to, uh, you're requesting that the council take a position right now on uh, to a, a broad resolution on supporting some type of, of uh, regulation on plastic bags? Well, um, to, yeah, just yes, to, clarify so to direct maybe Audrey to come forward at her, our next meeting so we can make that determination the next meeting with something broader. Okay. Um, council, uh, what's, what's your thoughts on this? Sounds good to me. Uh, All right. Ben, uh, yes, Bill. Martha, I don't know if you, is this, not, is this? That is part of your packet. Yeah, well, this was very interesting. It was 57 pages long, and it discussed the pro public, private sector and what they're doing at the publics, et cetera, et cetera. And it was very informative, and uh, it was dated February 1st, 2010. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I now know more about plastic bags than I ever did and the problems that they cause and how the private sector is dealing with it, many of them effectively, from what I can see. But we can always do a better job, that's for sure. Thank you. Uh, it's a great, great piece of good. So, um, Council, are are you are action. are you interested in in starting this discussion up and having Audrey bring something back to us so that the public can can opine in on this before we pass a resolution? Is that what you want Audrey to do? Bring something back so we can engage the public? It's always good to engage the public. Mayor. Well, we're, we can't pass it here, so we're going to have to. Yes, well, she'll have to bring something written that's broad. Yeah, okay. I, I just like to be able to kick the, you know, get all the stakeholders uh, together. And I don't want to necessarily do this in the city. This is for statewide mm -hmm. policy. So um, we don't want to take anything away from BS. Okay, um, uh, Council, would you be all right with, with Audrey, just giving Audrey direction to, to bring a broad resolution back uh, in regards to the subject and just for your consideration at the mm -hmm. next meeting? Mm -hmm. That would be all right? Sure. All right, I good. think I understand the direction, sir. Okay, all right, and, and that way, and then and you can put it on the next agenda so that we can get people in here to tell us whether they like it or hate it. Because we've had this conversation before, and as you know, I'm, I'm a big supporter of doing away with the plastic bag thing. I, mm -hmm. I, I've I'm learned to do without bags whatsoever it's, it's just awesome. it's really easy yeah so if i can do it i don't know what the big deal is you know and if you forget and leave your bags out in the car you just roll you know it's amazing i figured this out by myself you roll your groceries out to your car in the cart and put them in the bags in the car what's the big deal anyway <laughs> so so anyway you understand the instructions from yes, okay. sir. good I'm thank you, you mayor appreciate good. it do you have anything else for us? uh yeah just two things one is we're Hey, elections coming up. And you're, if you're voting by mail, um, you might want to peruse the League of Women Voters uh, guide on the amendments. There are going to be 10 amendments, even though it's numbered up to 12. They took two off the ballot. This is a very good, you can find this at the library. That's where I found it. You might be able to find it at the, we have some in the city hall. Um, I found mine at the library. 
and it's got a discussion pro on pro and con on the various amendments and of course we want to be educated prepared voters because lots of people vote in general presidential elections and we don't want to be standing there 45 minutes reading all that so be prepared get your guide and uh, vote again uh, personal opinion we have not taken a position here at council but I bet you I would know how everybody here would vote amendment four has to do with reducing local government revenue and you know we're very good here at the local level we've reduced our local government revenue again during this budget year uh, we've done that and uh, what this will do it will prohibit us from being able to have the choice locally about how we um, how we uh, 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 ass assess both property appraiser and how um, our commercial property, how we tax our commercial properties. It will cut in half the taxable rate on non homesteaded property like commercial income properties and second homes. Well, uh, that's not so good. <laughs> so, <laughs> with that, what that will mean to you is your services will be cut at the city. We try to work on a bare bones city, and we do very well here doing that. Please vote no on Amendment 4. Personal opinion. Number two and last is um, I, I sent an email uh, out to our, our friends here at the city that Marianne Kilgannon, who is um, a light in the city and helped to found the incorporation committee and write the charter for our city, is very ill. And you can send cards or just say hello at a little visit. Um, she doesn't have any family here. Uh, she never had children. She was, never was married. Her friends are her family. Visit her at Joanne's house on Imperial Parkway. Thank you. You're welcome. Bless your heart, Martha. Thank you very much for sending that out. It's yeah. very nice. Bill, what do you have for us today? Thank you, Ben. Uh, library Task Force is scheduled for October 25th. John put it together and uh, looking forward to seeing the old faces and working on it. Secondly, I'd like to thank uh, Public Works, uh, Matt. Uh, he, uh, we had some problems with grass growing on the east side of Benita uh, Beach Road on east of the uh, interchange. Sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he, uh, I, I saw the, the email to, that, he, that he sent or mailed to the, to the people out there. And I, it's so important that that kind of communication goes on like it does because People want an answer. You may not, they may not like the answer, but they want an answer. And Matt's, uh, the way he presented it was excellent. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's really good stuff. And uh, it'll continue, I'm sure. And, um, and hopefully in, the, in, the, in this new budget year we're upon, I'll make sure that everybody is up on everything and by memo, et cetera, et cetera, so that you can see how well the operation is running, which I think we already know that. But... Uh, uh, we should have a very interesting year with a lot of uh, good things happening in the city of Benita Springs, uh, and I look forward to working with everybody. Thank you. Good. Good. Uh, Steve, got anything for us today? Uh, just real quickly, I sent uh, for the public. I sent an e a couple of emails over the last few days about uh, the uh, Richard Milburn Academy being closed here in Benita Springs. It's the alternative charter high school for kids who are at risk. I'm I'm, I'm pretty torqued up about this whole thing. The, uh, I'm learning that um, among the negatives is that charter schools aren't, un, aren't operating on the same standards as the public schools, including the standards for facilities. So um, as, a, as a taxpayer, if I'm paying taxes into a charter school and we buy a, a facility that's not up to standards for public uh, schools, and they decide to close the school, uh, we as taxpayers are stuck with that building. That's only one issue. The uh, bigger issue for me is that if you can't honor a contract, don't enter a contract. The contract asks for 120 days notice before you close a school. We put 60 at-risk kids in that school expecting to finish the academic year, and it was closed without 120 days notice. We don't have a place that's workable to put 60 kids who couldn't make it in traditional high schools back into school. So ultimately we end up on the streets with those 60 kids. It's unacceptable. It's, 
it's unconscionable and even though it's not in our purview it is part of our city and if we aren't all infuriated by this then we're missing something thank you thank you very much sir and uh, thank you for bringing this to our attention and and for trying to work with the school board it was a uh, laudable effort but uh, it's tough tough to, to work with that thank you janet what do you have for us it's a tough following up on all this serious stuff when I've got to come out and bring my, my buddy oh my up gosh. here. Oh. <laughs> the new model. Just back from Hawaii. It's uh, that <laughs> time of year again. Um, October, the end of October and fall downtown is uh, shaping up to be quite, quite the uh, fun-filled event time for downtown. Uh, starting off with the fish fry on Friday, October 26th. Uh, that's in the evening from 5 to 9. Then the next day is the Riverfest portion of the festivals and the Imperial River Challenge and the Martha Simons Award goes out this year to uh, the first uh, canoeer to get down the river, which is pretty cool. And uh, they also will be doing, uh, of course, this is where this guy participates, the Adopt a Florida Quacker happens at noon that day, so get your duckies. Um, there is cash prizes, and that was sponsored by First Community Bank of Southwest Florida this year, which is very neat. Uh, our own Parks and Recreation is uh, has supplied the Doddle Duck, which is the last duck to cross the lines prize, and it's a uh, membership to our uh, fitness club there, our fitness room. And then the festivities continue with things going on all day downtown at the uh, Lyles Historic Plaza, and then that day is also the beginning of the uh, haunted Walk, which is new to downtown this year, and I think that's going to be a lot of fun and get a lot of the kids and older kids ready and geared up for Halloween, and that's going to be sponsored by uh, the Benita Stero Association of Realtors, BEAR, and uh, that's in conjunction with a lot of our local charities, and it's going to be a lot of fun, and that's going to be held each night during that week in Depot Park. It's gonna, they're going to set that place up, and it's going to be pretty spooky and fun to do. So a uh, lot of stuff going on in our historic downtown area and I uh, hope to see everybody out and, and uh, at these events. Um, and then one more thing is that the return of our seasonal farmers market is uh, happening. Our downtown Lions Club market is reopening uh, Wednesday the 17th. So uh, again, I hope to see everybody there too. Thank you. Thank you very much. Steve. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first of all, I, uh, going back to the uh, development agreement, I, Carl, I want to thank you very, very much. Uh, you did a great job of uh, succinctly giving us the background information and how this all turned out. And uh, you do a great job with the intro body and conclusion. I appreciate that very much. Um, uh, I was notified today by Mills Barbershop, Marie and Steve Strader, who for years on Veterans Day have given free haircuts to veterans. Um, this year they said because it falls on a Sunday they will be giving free haircuts on a Saturday. And again, they've done this for so many things. They're, they're great to our veterans and I really appreciate that. It's Mel's Barbershop. Um, Chamber of Commerce. Um, we had the Citizen of the Year, Mar Marjorie Rebecca, a wonderful lady, uh, is, is great. And in the audience we have Terry Lemaine, who is our Ambassador of the Year. Terry, congratulations. <laughs> That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you very much. Peter, what do you have for us today? Yeah, I also wanted to, um, well, Terry, congratulations, absolutely. And uh, Marjorie Rubaki, who won the Bonita Springs Citizen of the Year, um, resident, longtime resident of District 4 and um, <laughs> pil pillar, pillar of our community. Absolutely, Martha, she's an outstanding person. And uh, Shaw Development also, um, and I guess in District 4. So wonderful, wonderful assets, not only to District 4, but to our community and to our city. And I want to compliment them very much. Uh, wanted to, and Janet had shared this news with me, and certain word is starting to get around. And I've spoken with some folks at the YMCA that they're going to move forward with the Charter High School, plans to build the Charter High School uh, a few years down the road. I don't really know exactly what the time frame is, but my guess is between two to three years. And uh, the Florida League of Cities, I was at the September 14th meeting in Orlando, and the next meeting is coming up here on October 12th, so Martha up there, and um, Martha, thank you for getting me involved with that. And I just wanted to put this out to here internally and anybody in Bonita Springs to bring forward any issues that you might want to recommend, because the Florida League of Cities, we will be recommending 
issues and topics um, that we move forward to the State House and the State Senate for them to consider, discuss, ultimately vote on. Uh, so if there's any um, issues that anybody feels strongly about, please let me know and I'll take those to the next meeting um, on October 12th in Kissimmee. Thank you very much. Okay, Council, thank you very much. Uh, we have three sets of minutes to approve. Would anyone like to do so? Make motion. motion. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, approving all three sets. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Simons. Aye. Councilman Lockhart. Aye. Councilman McIntosh. Aye. Councilwoman Martin. Aye. Councilman Slack. Aye. Mayor Nelson. Aye. Councilman Simmons. Aye. Okay, and one more time, public comment. Anyone wishing to speak, please come forward. What's my bag? Yeah, Rick Steinmeier. Uh, one thing you could do, a plastic bag is a plastic bag. Now, the city of Bonita Springs uses a lot of plastic bags. What would the city of Bonita Springs replace these plastic bags with? Nothing. And then they'll have to get a whole bunch of people to scrub the garbage cans. If you go to Publix, you can have a plastic bag. You can have a paper bag. You can bring your own bag. Now, they've done studies in California where you bring your own bag, and they found out that 50% of the bags were contaminated with salmonella poisoning from the last time they were used. So there's a downside to everything. So let's keep the freedom in uh, free enterprise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else this time? Please come forward. Good evening again, Kathy McGrath. Very quickly, I'm glad that you brought up the thing about the amendments. I contacted someone I respect very much because I was confused about them. And uh, I did get permission to use this person's name, but they worked for the legislature for 20 years and said that all of these amendments were placed there by the legislature and not by petition. Okay? So in other words, anything placed on the legislature, they're there because of special interest groups. The one I was interested in is for because of the recapture law where your assessment and your value goes down, but your taxes still go up if you're homesteaded. Well, this was passed in Colorado, a similar one, and the voters eventually voted it out because of all the problems it cost. It says, it says here, this is opposed by, I'm not gonna say who this is, the Florida Association of Counties, the League of Cities, Florida Local Government Coalition. The fiscal impact is estimated to be 185.7 million to local governments the first year, increasing to 1.6 billion by 2016 and 2017. This amendment also provides an added tax break to out-of-state businesses and shifts the burden to Florida residents. So educate yourself, everyone. What sometimes sounds good isn't really. It's going to come back and bite us. So remember, if this had been put on the ballot by petition where everybody wanted it, that would be great. But when special interest has it on there, look out. Thanks for letting me say this. Thank, thank you very much. You're welcome. Anyone else this time, please come forward. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else to come before us, well, uh, Council, thank you very much. Okay. Staff, nice okay. job. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Thank you. That's really cool. Uh,